we have uh, uh, already, I have to tell you that, on the 11th of, uh, uh, of uh, February, presented uh, this uh, plan as a contribution uh, to uh, Commissioner Sefcovic, uh, who is, as you know, responsible uh, for uh, the coordination uh, of all policies on the energy union uh, inside the uh, Commission. And uh, the reason why we have uh, produced this uh, paper is to contribute to uh, the uh, proposal, proposals uh, that the Commission normally shall put uh, forward uh, in the uh, coming days. Uh, but before um, entering in, in, into the presentation of this uh, paper, uh, let me say a, a few words about um, uh, two issues linked uh, to uh, the uh, energy union. First of all, on, on Ukraine, I think that uh, everything what we see uh, today and the last weeks in, 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 in Ukraine is proof of the fact that we need uh, the fastest as possible to have uh, uh, an energy union also to uh, increase uh, the uh, energy dependence uh, of uh, the uh, European Union. And um, um, independently from uh, the energy union, uh, I think that uh, uh, with the Minsk II agreement we need as fast as possible to prepare uh, and to prepare further sanctions uh, with the European Council uh, if uh, we want to be sure that uh, this Minsk II agreement is um, uh, fully implemented. Uh, second uh, uh, thing before entering into the, uh, the proposal uh, is that I want to, uh, to, to underline also that uh, uh, an energy union is absolutely key if you see what is happening uh, now in, in negotiations between Mr. Putin and Mr. Orban uh, in the European Union. You know that Mr. Orban a few uh, days ago uh, uh, have uh, made uh, statements uh, criticizing uh, the attempts of the uh, European Commission to establish uh, a European Union and he has uh, used a number of uh, very hard words uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to that. Uh, and that's naturally uh, the consequence of the fact that uh, uh, Mr. Orban has made a deal. Apparently, uh, Mr. Putin has bought an, an ally in Europe uh, and uh, by offering uh, to uh, the country of Mr. Orban cheaper gas prices and also a credit for a nuclear power plant joint venture. And um, this is a clear uh, proof of the fact uh, that uh, Putin is using energy as a weapon uh, towards uh, the European Union and it's also a clear demonstration I think of the disastrous uh, consequences of energy uh, uh, dependence uh, and it's also the reason I think um, this deal why Mr. Orban is now against uh, 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 an energy union and doesn't want that the European Commission uh, is involved uh, uh, in negotiations uh, between uh, member states of the European Union uh, and third countries on energy prices, energy strategy, energy infrastructure. Uh, we have, and that's my third point, before uh, leaving the floor uh, to Herben, Jan Herbendry and, and, uh, and Mort, Mort Peterson, uh, to, to tell you we have already seen the proposal of the Commission and we have, in fact, uh, when you compare it with our proposal, three key uh, uh, requests to the Commission. The first is that uh, we think that the Commission has to be more ambitious in their own role inside an energy union. Uh, when it concerns global negotiations between countries and third countries on energy prices, on energy strategy, on energy infrastructure, we think that it's not only sufficient, of un, not only necessary that the Commission is participating in these talks, but is really leading these talks, mm -hmm. leading these negotiations. Like it is a little bit the case in, in trade negotiations, like it is the case in trade negotiations, where the Commission, in fact, negotiates in the name of the 28 member states. 
Uh, the second uh, uh, point that we mainly have is that we think that um, we need a real uh, solid governance for this energy union. In the paper of uh, uh, the European Commission, I don't know, it's two paragraphs or three paragraphs, uh, the governance issue uh, of the uh, energy union. And we all know uh, from our experience, certainly in the monetary union, that governance counts. That the problem in the economic and monetary union that we have uh, seen the last years was a governance problem. Well, we have to fix that from the beginning in the right way in the energy union. And we think that we need a governance structure similar to the semester that we have in the economic and monetary union, also in the energy union, in which the in, 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 with a system, with a framework in which the commissioner plays a key role in this governance and not a, not a, a secondary role. And then finally, and the last uh, uh, remark we have uh, when we compare our proposals, our paper, uh, with the uh, commission proposals is that we think that we need uh, a huge package of legislative proposals uh, on the table uh, in the coming months and the coming years. Uh, in the paper of the European Commission, um, there is only, uh, they, are, they are only talking about uh, a legislative proposal to redesign the electricity market, but we think that more is necessary than only a legislative proposal on the electricity market. We need also um, uh, legislative proposals on the other uh, key issues, uh, including the governance. Uh, issue uh, of the uh, energy union. So I, I give now the floor to Gerbjörn Gerbrandy, who is the coordinator of our NV team, and, and together with uh, Morten Peterson, uh, responsible for this uh, paper. Okay, thank you, Guy. Uh, we, we have a few slides to, um, to, to go through. Good afternoon from my side as well. Um, at this slide, you, you see, let's say, the five priority areas that we um, identified. Um, and Morten and I, we will um, uh, share these five uh, priority areas and we'll go through them. First, um, a few general remarks. Uh, Guy has already emphasized it, but if Putin has done one thing, it's that he has reminded us that the EU is not only an economic project, but also a political one, and that geopolitics are back. Um, energy is a strategic commodity, it's heating our homes, it's, it's moving the transport sector and it's keeping our European industry in operation. And we must realize ourselves that Europe is world champion, world champion in vulnerability when it concerns energy, because we have the highest um, uh, dependency in the world on energy. We import 53% of our energy from um, outside the EU. Um, and finally, my, my final general remark is that uh, we've seen the last couple of years that not only Europe, but the world in general is in a huge energy, energy transition, which is a very interesting uh, process where you see that the old-fashioned centralized uh, power supply is being replaced by bottom-up um, power supply, uh, people at homes having solar panels on their roofs, in combination with uh, much more renewable energy also at a uh, centralized uh, level. So you see that this energy transition is taking place and, it, and the energy union should be um, 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 speeding up that process. Um, let me start with um, the first let's say priority area, and that is the uh, competitive internal energy market. You see it on your screen here. Um, I'll start with the red uh, part, a fully integrated energy grid. Um, it's, it's obvious that we, we need a very competitive internal energy market. So far, we started in, in 2008. So far, we saved around 2 billion euros thanks to the accomplishment of the internal market. But the savings that are still lying there on the table are huge. We can save 50 billion euros a year if we um, uh, finalize the internal energy market. For us, it's a no-brainer. We've been saying this for years, and now it's time for Europe to deliver. 
So what do we need? We, have, we need a fully integrated energy grid. It's obvious. Energy needs to flow. It has to be flowing from one member state uh, to another. At this time, we still have many, many energy islands in the EU. The Iberian Peninsula, the Baltics, but even between Belgium and the Netherlands, we see huge problems in the um, interconnection. With the problems uh, with the nuclear power station at Doel, um, if we would have had a cold winter in Belgium, uh, there would have been a shortage of electricity supply. And just eight kilometers across the border in the Netherlands, there is a mothballed um, gas power station, um, which has no connection to Belgium. So it's not only a few islands uh, in Europe, it's a general problem that interconnection is, is, well, like we're still living in the 19th century in the energy field. Secondly, the um, liberalization. We, as liberals, of course, strongly believe in free competition. Um, and that also accounts for, for the energy market. We have to dismantle distortive state regulation. Um, you see it with regulated prices. You see it where um, the operators on both sides of, uh, of a border are not able to use the optimum of capacity because um, there is no um, uh, free flow and, and competition. Um, thirdly, um, energy transition. I already mentioned it in my general remarks. What is a basic a requisite for uh, the energy transition is um, super grids and smart grids. If we have the right grids, we enable renewable energy to flow in the right way and to also um, uh, deal with the um, um, well instable flows of energy that are linked to uh, renewables. Um, and it's absolutely, these grids are absolutely crucial for breakthrough of, further breakthrough of renewables. Fourthly, um, we should end subsidy shopping. At the moment you see very strange things happening, that perfectly operating uh, windmills are being uh, torn down because of a subsidy, um, uh, it's more profitable to build a new one than to continue with, with the old one. Or you see that um, certain supplies are um, placed somewhere where the situation is not ideal, but the subsidy is uh, uh, making it much more ideal for uh, those uh, involved. So we have to internalize the energy costs and uh, we want to reduce the imbalance between the different support schemes we see in, um, in Europe. And the European Commission should play a very strong role here in coming up with guidelines to harmonize the support schemes in the future. And finally, uh, for the internal market is of course a well-functioning uh, emission trading system. This afternoon we will be voting in the Environment Committee on the market stability reserve. It's a first step, but uh, the ETS is simply not functioning now as it should function. Uh, it's cheaper to burn coal than to use uh, gas which of course is uh, rather silly if you look at the CO2 emissions uh, uh, linked to that. So those are crucial uh, in order to have a well-functioning uh, and effective internal market. Um, second element I would like to raise is energy efficiency. Um, as always, completely underestimated in importance. Um, if you look at the 2020 energy and climate package, the only non-binding targets are in energy efficiency and it's, it's the lowest hanging fruit and it's the cheapest energy we have, that's the energy we're not using. Um, we identified three different um, elements of it. First of all, um, by um, improving energy efficiency, we are lowering costs. We can work towards a world where we have an abundance in almost uh, 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 zero cost energy. It is um, a sort of vision of the future, so lowering costs is, is crucial uh, if you link it to, to energy efficiency. Secondly, we uh, want to empower consumers. Um, energy bills are still a huge problem in many parts of, of Europe. Um, and by um, focusing on energy efficiency, we can uh, seriously lower these energy bills. 
um, but also by energy labeling. Um, we can construct energy neutral housing uh, at the moment, but still when it happens it's front page news. And we are able to do that since the 17th uh, of the previous century already, so we should be much more um, uh, ambitious there. And that brings me automatically to the second point, harnessing untapped potential. Um, if you see that 1% of energy savings, uh, energy efficiency, saves 2.5% of gas imports, you see that there is a very strong geopolitical um, uh, link between that. 75% of European housing stock is completely inefficient, so there is a whole world uh, to win there. Um, and thirdly, um, it's a wonderful way of boosting investments and competitiveness. If you look at industry, 20 to 50 percent of production costs is linked to energy and resources. Um, so if you lower these uh, energy and resources, um, then you, have, you become much more competitive. And if you see that in the future energy prices in Europe will remain higher than, for instance, in the US and China, it means that if we want to stay competitive, energy efficiency is, is absolutely crucial. Okay, the next slide is on, I think, one of the most crucial elements, and that's the reason why Guy already um, uh, said a few words about it. It's the governance. And I think it's crucial and decisive for the success of an energy union. And if I make a, a parallel with um, the economic um, uh, uh, policy that we're having, we first had to go through the most severe financial crisis since the 30s in the last century before we were willing to come to a real European governance on economic affairs. Let's prevent that this time on energy. Let's not wait till we get the most severe energy crisis we have ever faced in Europe and make that step before to, um, to do it together and not uh, doing it um, in 28 uh, different member states. Um, we believe that a strong European government is the only guarantee for long-term stability and predictability for investors, and they're so badly needed, but that's something that Morten will uh, talk about later on. Only with a very strong governance we can avoid that people like Putin can play their divide and rule game. Um, he mentioned uh, Orban already, we've seen it in other uh, examples as well. So we have to be united and speak with one voice. First of all, and I think that is a very, very liberal um, and crucial approach here, that we see a parallel with economic policy through what we call an energy pack. We would like to have a super commissioner for energy like we have um, on economic and uh, monetary affairs. So we are definitely inspired by the success of economic uh, policy. Um, that means a very strong reporting by member states and um, fierce uh, monitoring by the European Commission. It means that infrastructural um, uh, projects should be in line with the European um, strategy on energy security. And it also means uh, for the 2030 climate and energy framework that we badly need national targets. So the current European-wide targets, they have to be translated into national targets like we have always wanted uh, as liberals, binding nationally determined targets and a very, very strong role for the Commission to monitor and follow up. And with that, I give the floor to Morten to follow up. Thanks. Thanks, Gabby. And just to, just adding a few remarks on, 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 on the governance issue. Uh, I think we have to be very frank that uh, we are currently in a political climate where member states are very hesitant uh, to take the action that we actually encourage them to do. And this is why we are encouraging or, 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 or wanting the Commission to have a stronger role. Uh, we want to have increased governance. We need more union and not less union in, in energy affairs. And for sure, Ukraine and Putin is a wake-up call for all of us. So we call upon member states to take this 
more seriously uh, than they've done previously. Uh, recalling the, the council conclusions, the latest council conclusions being too vague in, in, in our opinion uh, in terms of governance, uh, so therefore the Commission must and should have uh, an even stronger role in, in, in the future uh, according to our proposal here. Uh, let, me, let me just add a few more words on, on, on the last slides please. Uh, we have a slide on, on research and innovation. Clearly uh, a, a big priority if we want Europe to be or become uh, number one in renewables, um, so sh surely uh, research and innovation uh, plays a, a vital role in, in, in this and, and we're emphasizing that we also need support in pre-commercial stages uh, in order to develop and strengthen also the competitiveness of, of European companies in this. There's an important economic dimension in terms of job creation, exports and investments in all this that we also should take uh, very seriously. Therefore, of course, uh, adequate funding for research and innovation in order to uh, drive this uh, change. And, and we'd also like to see, in terms of priorities for, for these research and investment uh, um, uh, research projects, that energy efficiency and renewables would be highly prioritized within uh, the research programs that, uh, that we do. Um, and then we then turn to uh, the last slide, which is on, on investments. Um, Clearly, there's a paradox in, in all this. Um, when talking to private uh, investors, uh, we hear that money is out there. Uh, we have pension funds, we have banks, we have all sorts of, of, of institutional investors actually wanting to invest. And for sure, we also know, on the other hand, that the projects are out there. Our challenge is somehow to connect these dots. And this is why we emphasize that the Juncker Plan must deliver also in terms of how to apply and get approval for funding for specific projects. We know the projects are out there, the money is there, it's up to us to somehow uh, connect these dots. It's so important that the Juncker Plan and the initiatives here are unbureaucratic because if we really are to invest and make sure and ensure that local projects, be it in district heating or efficiency or whatever, uh, actually get some funding. We have to ensure that it is as unbureaucratic as, uh, as, as possible. Uh, Khaben Jan mentioned the point on, on, on subsidies uh, early on. Um, and affordability for consumers is, is of course, also a, a, a vital point. Uh, trying to make sure that people at the end of the day, get the energy that, that, that they need. This is, of course, a, a priority. Uh, and on, on the issue of investor certainty, let me just uh, mention a, uh, a, a brief uh, example from, from my own country. Uh, Apple uh, said yesterday that they are investing, I believe, 800 million euros in, in a data uh, center in, in, in my country, Denmark. Uh, one of the prime reasons for this is the access to reliable uh, renewable energy sources. And, and this is an interesting point uh, as so far as you would hear many critics saying that uh, considerations of renewables, etc., doesn't go hand in hand with investment and businesses. And, and this clearly demonstrates the opposite. Uh, so, having investor certainty, having access to renewables uh, is also a way of, of making businesses and countries and the European Union as such uh, competitive in, in, in the long term. Uh, so, uh, we know that in, in the foreseeable future we have an investment need of close to 1 trillion euro, uh, which is why this entire regulatory framework has to be uh, as safe and stable as, as possible, coming back to the points that Khaben Yan just mentioned on, on, on the targets.